first thing um, about what small states can do and cannot do. I think we have a very good example in, in our own history, in, in Malta's history, I, I am Maltese, um, in that small states have the capacity to push ideas, but don't have the capacity to follow them up, or often don't have the capacity to follow them up. And our ex the example I have in mind is that Malta, more or less single-handedly, and I'm speaking of one individual, created on the UN agenda the idea of the law of the sea, the common heritage of mankind, Ambassador Pardo, the late Ambassador Pardo, but the government or the governments of, of that followed that um, initiative were unable to capture the, um, the fruits of it um, and in, in the practical terms were unable to obtain the establishment in Malta of the institution that followed that initiative, which went in the end to Jamaica. Now, I'm married to a Jamaican, so that doesn't bother me, but um, it, it's just a case where lack of follow-up, perhaps connected to a change in, in government, um, didn't, wasn't able to, to carry through the idea first advanced. Secondly, um, I'd like to mention something coming from my experience in the climate change negotiations. I was thrown into these parachuted into them when they first started in 1991, not knowing much about the subject. I know a little bit more now and I can answer questions uh, over coffee later. But um, one of the first things that struck me when I flew into Washington halfway through the first negotiating meeting on the Convention on Climate Change was the existence of something called the Association of Small Island States. A, a rather large group of countries, small but very vocal, um, pushing an idea which was that um, countries that contributed most to climate change should be held liable um, for the damage that they caused. The idea didn't get very far, but they had this idea to push. And in the end, obtaining recognition as a special category of countries, not known as AOSIS, but as small island developing states, a special category which is mentioned whenever there's mention of any, of any listing of particularly vulnerable conditions, small island states, least developed countries, landlocked countries, etc., etc., and also institutionally recognized in that in the makeup of the Bureau of the Conference of the Parties of the Convention, there are 11 members, normally there would be 10, two for each of the five UN regions, but there's an 11th who is a representative of a small island state. So there was some victory there in obtaining recognition. Reflecting on that experience as I was coming to this meeting, I thought of two downsides, or two maybe not so positive aspects of that experience. Firstly, that the emphasis on liability um, was explained by the fact that most of the representatives of AOSIS were lawyers. Now I have, some of my best friends are lawyers, but uh, they do have this thing about going for um, issues that could make, keep them active to the rest, for the rest of their days. They were lawyers, and they were not lawyers from the island states concerned. They were mostly what you might call mercenary lawyers, um, people mostly from the UK and also from the USA, advancing the cause of uh, these countries in the multilateral context. Um, clearly this is explained by the fact of the lack of uh, people available to man or to staff these negotiations, but it did somehow detract from the political credibility of, of their case that they were not Samoans or Vanuatuans or St. Lucians or whatever, they were Brits or Americans. Um, secondly, the emphasis on insularity, on small island, I think in retrospect was a mistake in that it was the small that is more important than the island. The limitation to islands, first of all got in some islands which are not so small, um, I mean Papua New Guinea is not small, Jamaica is sort of medium size, um, they, it, if, if it had been rethought so as to include economically small, you could have had all of Africa, or a lot of Africa. And 
Africa, in fact, was a latecomer, to use your word, to the idea that it was vulnerable to climate change, perhaps as vulnerable as small islands. The coalition of small islands plus, let's say, least developed countries in Africa would have been 100 countries, very, very powerful politically. That opportunity was never seen, I think. Um, Africa came in later, and somehow the two things never merged. Uh, how difficult it is to catch up. Um, and I'm thinking here of the acquis communautaire, of, of what it involves to join an institution, in this case the EU, that has been going for, what is it, 50 years now, but when, when we joined it was a little bit less. But the, the pile of stuff that you have to translate into law, into practice, into awareness, into bureaucratic activity is tremendous. Um, I'm in some way attached or related to or occasionally invited to the, environment, the ministry responsible for environment and, and the, I think that the volume of EU directives there is greater than in any other sector. Um, and the, the colleagues there are really tripping over themselves trying to, trying to do all the things that, are, that they are supposed to do with, with the, basically the same things that, say, Germany is being asked to do with, with a fraction of, of, the, of the staff available to do it. Um, they are picking up yellow cards quite rapidly. Um, perhaps, as I believe Luxembourg has been able to do in all, in all the 50 years it's been a member, they put the yellow cards in a drawer and nobody bothers too much. But Luxembourg is special because it was there at the beginning and has honorable status, and we are trying to prove that we are sort of really genuine members of, of the club.